What is going on everyone, it's your boy Fry the Producer and today I got a cool video. Pretty much got a $35 round, uh, $36 I paid for this mic but I decided to make a video on how to make one of these kinds of mics sound a lot better than what they would sound like in a raw digital kind of state. So you can see right here on the screen I got two channels. So I got the analog channel rooted to the digital channel, rooted to the master. And pretty much I'm going to give you a template. Um, I'm using all three plugins, so these are the modern series. And we'll run through every one of them and show you how to just get a, a thicker sound. So off the bat I'm going to show you the comparison so you know uh, what we're A-Bing here. So if I was to turn off this channel, my um, analog channel, let's call it that, or digital analog channel. I'm going to keep the noise gate on. I recommend you to buy this exact noise gate. It just works so much better than anything else and you can just record without worrying i mean if i turn this off listen you know what i mean that's like minus 40 dbs of noise uh, minus 40 db of noise and that sucks so turn that on you know what i mean you got no problems you got a quiet room it's worth a uh, hundred dollars which costs way more than the mic but less hassle okay so i'll firstly turn off all of this and you can hear and then i'll compensate so you're not just believing that the louder one is better so that should give you a kind of slight comparison. You can hear that the compressor, I've just used gain on the compressor. You can kind of hear that the it sounds a lot more brittle. It sounds a lot more thin and digital. The high end isn't as nice, uh, very tinny kind of sound. So yeah, let's go back to the other one. And hopefully the levels are slightly the same. Um, if they're a little bit off, you know, uh, whatever. But So yeah, back to this. And it sounds a bit... Warm, it sounds a bit weird in headphones now that I'm listening, but on the monitors it sounded a lot better. So pretty much what I'm doing is from the get-go, I am running everything through this mixer. So channel one, and then I'm getting some gain on there. But the gain I'm aiming for is minus 18 decibels. And the reason for that is, let me just whoop, get that out the way. The reason for that is, um, how can I explain this to you? Basically, on an analog VU meter, which is one of these meters you can see on the screen here. Zero basically means minus 18 decibels in the digital realm. So I'll basically show you, um, I'm going to use a test tone, but I'm not going to play it because it's really loud. Or I'll give you, if you've never heard a sine wave before. It sounds like that, but I'm just going to mute the main channel and then just show you what happens when I uh, put the level to minus 18 on the VU meter. So just watch out for that. You see what I mean? So basically you're trying to aim for minus 18 when coming into your interface, just so you got a nice level to work with, uh, especially if you're working in 24-bit. You can go and do the research on why 24-bit is better than 16-bit. You got basically more headroom. So in 16-bit, I don't have the numbers off top right now, but I think with 24-bit you got 124 decibels of headroom. Um, I'll put the right figures in the video. Um, I haven't thought about that stuff in a while, but Anyway, so basically aim for minus 18 around zero. I'm not at all, but generally you don't want to go louder than that. So anywhere between minus 20 and zero, VU is fine. And from there on out, what you can see is I'm doing is I'm pulling up this, uh, I don't really know what compressors these are emulating. They all look like 1176s to me, but I'm sure I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, basically what I'm doing with this one is I'm just getting about a decibel of gain reduction. As you can see on the loud parts, you get about a decibel of gain reduction. And then I'm going into this SSL console EQ, they call it. And what I'm doing is I'm just cutting by about 60 to 80 hertz of the low end. So we high passing it to so getting rid of the bass. And what I'm doing is I've decided to take out some of the top end. So 20 kilohertz I'm getting rid of and just keeping it at 18 uh, kilohertz. And from there on out, I'm doing another 1176 type thing. And this one really is like the glue of the compression because the first one is really just to tame the peaks, the loud peaks. As you can see there, when I speak loud, it, it compresses. And this one is really just to glue everything together. So you can see whenever I speak, there's compression between zero and three uh, units, whatever view 
Uh, you know, you, you don't want to be going further than that for vocals, especially for spoken word on rap. Maybe you could go for about, uh, you know, three to ten around in between there. That's why it's quite nice. And after that, I, oh, I've already used that one. I don't even know what plugin this is, but it's some sort of vacuum compressor emulation. And I've just used a preset on this one, so I think I used the warmth preset. And it doesn't really do too much, but it does give it that extra bit of sound that I quite like. Especially the cut through on a speaker system. I wish I could be listening on the speaker system. Uh, I don't really like monitoring with headphones. And yeah, then this is my favorite um, plugin from these modern modern series, whatever this brand was called. The guy gave them out for free, so I don't really know too much about them. Link in the description, obviously. And yeah, pretty much what I do is I boost the input gain a bit. I put the color to about halfway. I turn up the level a little bit. Filter I leave to nothing. Ceiling I leave and output I leave. And it's in, I think it says STD mode, which is kind of weird, but hey. And yeah, uh, before I forget, what I did on the input channel as well was add an analogger, analogger just to get a bit more gain in there. So just to hit minus 18 and not doing anything else besides adding halfway color, a little bit of gain, just to, you know, get rid of the characteristic of your... You know kind of i mean this is an analog preamp but it's not the highest quality preamp i'll do an updated video i've, I've ordered a dbx uh preamp so we'll do a comparison video when that time comes and yeah pretty much that's the whole level i mean um to it i'll give you some game you might as well buy this will probably make the screen recorder lag so i'm sorry if the audio hacks a bit but basically you want to be aiming for a target when Whenever you're doing something, you want to be aiming for, aiming for a target. So my aim right here is to not go over 13. So you can see I did, I think in the, the beginning of the video, it was pretty loud. I was speaking a bit too close to the mic. And yeah, I pretty much always aim between minus 23 RMS. And this is reference to zero. You, you're going to have to learn uh, about this. Um, but the peak is what you understand and know in FL Studio. That's just pure peak. But RMS is perceived loudness, root mean square, just check it up on Wikipedia. And yeah, I don't aim for higher than 12, minus 12, that's getting a bit loud. And yeah, this uh, camera just died, so sorry about that. But yeah, pretty much that's all I want to do. So on the master, all I'm doing is cutting away some of the low end, not really, but cutting away some of the high end again. And then chopping away some of the low end. So a nice uh, like 60, 73 hertz cut or whatever, and that's a 60 hertz cut. And I don't like the essing, so I'm doing some EQ on my problem frequency. And the way you can figure out uh, how to, you know, where your sound sound is, is by just going and you can see that's where your trouble frequency is. And that's why having something like this is so beneficial um, because you can actually visually see what's going on. So. So it's about 7,000, but it sounded right. Don't always use a visual as your guide. And then yeah, I'm pretty much doing some gain. But lastly, I like to do a bit of what I call bus compression. So I like to set a compressor at around minus 1.5, just for any peaks that are getting near the limiter. So the limiter is the green line. Anywhere when the signal hits that green line, it'll be heavily compressed to stay within the digital realm anything over zero decibels is uh, no man's land really so yeah pretty much just a 3.5 to 1 compressor and nothing's really hitting there so the compressor never really works fairly hard attack uh, knee sorry the harder the knee the see there was a peak right there so it does help you know what I mean the harder the knee the quicker the compressor will get set in as you can see so I get like a medium to hard uh, knee and then yeah, I like to set my limiter to minus 0.2. You don't set it to 0.0. .0. Set it to minus 0.0, .0 or minus 0.1 or minus 0.2. And yeah, there's not really much more I can tell. I can talk about the mic a bit. And yeah, I mean, it's it's a Leem CM uh, 7400. I'll show it up on the screen. Uh, uh, yeah, anyway, tell me what mics you guys are rocking, what you're using, what equipment you're using, and all of that type of stuff. Like and subscribe. 
Have a good one. Peace.